Hey, how's it going? It's Patrick Malden, your regional tech trainer with the Keller Williams Southeast region, here today to talk to you guys about an awesome applet inside Command called Opportunities. Now, Opportunities is not just here to be able to help you with compliance, but it's also here to help you communicate with your clients, to help you keep track of your business from a 30,000 foot view, and to generally just help you run things better in your business using technology. So let's dive right on into it. We're gonna first start out on agent.kw.com, and as I've said before, this is where the magic begins. You're gonna log in using your command login as always, and then we're gonna go straight into the opening page. All right, let's go ahead and accept some cookies because everybody likes cookies. And then we're gonna move on to the next part. So before you can create an opportunity inside command, there's a very important thing that needs to be done first. I've made the joke a thousand times. I'm, you may not have heard it yet, so, um, so I'm sorry that you're getting to hear it today, but in the beginning, God created the contact and the contact was good. And that's what we're gonna do. So first, this has to start with the contact. Now, contacts can get into command through various ways. They can first get in as a lead through command. They can first get in as somebody um, downloading your consumer app or signing up on your website. They can come in through an import or they can come in through an integration such as PySync or one of the other ways that you can pull in from an external CRM or database. However, today what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a very simple contact for us to be able to go through opportunities. Now, first I'm gonna go over to contacts and let's just assume that I met somebody today at the gas station and they're super excited to, uh, to want to sell their house coming up soon. They've got some great opportunities happening and so they need to sell a house and they need to buy another. So we're gonna first start with what is called a listing opportunity. But we wanna get this person's information first. So let's just say that this person's name is, um, let's say George, uh, George Seller. And George Seller has um, no spouse attached to this particular thing. However, you could add a spouse with an additional contact card. George's primary phone number, we'll just say is 555-7778 because I've used the other number and it'll give me a database error. It'll say another contact already has that. So lead source, uh, we're not gonna worry about that in this. He is not gonna be marked as lead because it's gonna be an active client. We have had a two-way conversation about a piece of real estate business. And then I could tag him as say seller. All right, this is the basic information I really need to be able to get started on this. So I'm gonna go back to my database. We're gonna type George and then there he is, George Seller. And so George Seller currently has nothing on the timeline. We have not set him up on any smart plans. And uh, as far as smart plans, you should go look at my smart plans video on how to get that taken care of. But for the scope of this, we're just gonna go straight into creating an opportunity so we can start doing business with George. Now an opportunity to clarify is a potential piece of business. This could be uh, all the way back to cultivate as far as uh, we think somebody's gonna be doing it in a few months. We, we believe that they're gonna be listing in six months. Those sorts of people will fall into a cultivate stage. But this George that we met at the gas station had a great conversation with, he is ready to list his house. He is going to be an active kind of an opportunity. So we're gonna go over to opportunities. This is one of the ways that we can create them. There are two ways you can create an opportunity, but we're gonna go create opportunity. And so we have a market center selected. We have an opportunity type listing. We have the client already, George Seller, and currently there's no seller for this. Now, if you are part of a team, this is where you would be able to select the team and the owner. Now, um, the owner is gonna be who actually owns the opportunity itself. If you are on a team and you want your admin with unlimited access to be able to get to this, you have to create the opportunity in the team and make sure that the team is the owner of the opportunity, that the team's rainmaker is the owner of the opportunity, to clarify. But since I'm a single agent, single agent in this, um, we will go down to, um, 
we'll keep going down filling out the opportunity now the opportunity name it's going to default to the person's name and the kind of opportunity since this is an active piece of business we're going to know what his address is so we're just going to say that it's like one two three four main street now there's another step in this that will help your mca or help your compliance broker be able to find this however this opportunity name here can help as well sometimes if an opportunity is tagged oddly or it is not moved out of a cultivate into an active phase it can be difficult even when submitted for your compliance person at your market center to be able to locate it so a good practice here is to actually name the opportunity after the piece of business that you're doing okay custom tags we're gonna skip that from now estimated close date right now uh, let's just say that it's gonna happen on February 18th um, we have no idea however because this is just a listing that we're going into but let's uh, put that in there uh, commission rate we're gonna put 2.75 um, of course dictates whatever your practices are in your particular market however for this example we'll just put 2.75 this number will get carried over into your uh, gross commission income coming up. Uh, estimated listing price, uh, let's say it's $350,000. 350 plus the 2.75, the command will be able to take a look at that and determine, hey, this is your estimated, um, your estimated gross commission income. We'll show you in a second. Cultivate phase. Now I said that there's three phases. There's a cultivate, appointment, and an active. In each of these phases, there are also stages underneath it, which are customizable. For this example, he is an active seller that is ready to list his house, so we're gonna put him under active. Opportunities uh, that are the stages that are available, like I said, these are custom. However, for this, we're just gonna put him into staging, and then we're gonna create. Now he, is, he has an opportunity that is attached to his contact card that is available by going to his contact card or if we go over to the opportunities applet and we click on opportunities, he will also be available under the active phase for staging. Now, I, I like to put people in the staging phase when they first come in. Uh, one of the things that I actually created in this because you can create a um, inside the stages you can create custom checklists for each one is I created a custom checklist for some of the things that a client is going to want to, to know about and is going to want we're going to want to make sure is taken care of every single time that they have a, that you have a transaction with any seller and so we put some normal things in there like Client cleanup, you know, ask them to clean up the house, order photographer, key lockbox, copy of keys, review, sign paperwork, yada, 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 and on and on and on. And then you can see also down the right side that I have client updates on this. Client updates are a function built into the opportunities pipeline that will allow you to automatically update your clients every day or whatever time period you determine to let them know about different things that you've checked off the list. Now, each of these checklists are tied to a stage of the opportunity. So your phase is like your big bucket, and then your stages are like your small buckets inside the bucket. And as you move things down the track, getting ever and ever closer to close, um, you will continue to move from one of these buckets to the next. Now I added those in. You could add um, checklists to other stages if you like, such as showings, negotiation, uh, legacy is for if you've pulled people in from uh, dot loop. And then you can add more stages. Going back to the edit stages, we could say add stage and you can add a stage. You can also see that the probability on this is on there. That's a probability to close. Um, what the probability to close actually does for you is it takes that percentage of your gross commission income and it calculates how likely that with its likelihood of closing how much gross commission income your pipeline is worth so i'll go back real quick and show you what that looks like the 30,000 foot view on the opportunities pipeline and you can see here on the top right we have gross commission income potential income and probable income potential is the total value of your pipeline probable is what is probably in your pipeline ready to close and that's where the uh, potential comes in so as you move them from left to right your potential is going to increase and eventually once you close you're at 100 percent 
However, this is a good way to look at your pipeline from a 30,000 foot view and go, how much business do I really have in my pipeline? There's kind of a misconception that the pipeline itself, uh, that your active business is your pipeline, but that's not really the case. Real estate takes about 30 to 90 days to close transactions from the time you speak to someone to the time that they close. And because of that, if you want to be intentional and keep your cash flow consistent in your business, you have to keep the front end of your pipeline filled just as much as the back end, okay? All right, so let's get back to the opportunity itself. This is just on the pipeline. So we're gonna go back into that active and we're gonna go back to that George seller. We're gonna go ahead and fill in some information on this, general information, that'd be great. Some of these things we may not know yet. Uh, time frame, if they were potentially a few months out, we could put that they're six months out. Uh, the appointment schedule and appointment date, that has to do with when we're in the other stages. An agreement one, contract one, close date. All these things, all these details that we're adding are going to be moved over into dot loop if you're a dot loop user into the details tab over there so it is important if you have accurate information to go ahead and fill this out where possible of course property address we want to put that in we said that he's going to be in, let's see it's going to be in the united states of america one two three four main street and you can see that uh that it is actually is that actually an address in Hoover, Alabama? Well, isn't that fascinating? Okay. If it hadn't been, you can tab through and you can just manually enter whatever address you would like. Sometimes when you have a case of new construction and maybe it hasn't been added to Google Maps yet, it won't show up in the lookup fields here. So don't fret, just put the address in, tab through, and it'll give you the option to enter it manually. We can hit save. That property information, once again, will be copied over into DocuSign. Uh, seller's worksheet, we can add more information about that, such as uh, buyer agent compensation. Most likely we're probably doing a 50-50. You may be doing something different. Seller's closing costs, uh, mortgage balance, and things like that. Hit save. Okay, and then down in description, you have the ability to add some notes to the opportunity. There may be uh, some things that you're going to forget or some things you want to keep track of on this particular opportunity. And this is a great place to uh, kind of stick those notes for later on so that you don't forget it. It's especially important if you're working on a larger team and you have administrators and you've got buyers agents and listing agents and you've got a lot of hands in the, uh, a lot of cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. Um, it is good to have um, documentation of what you've spoken about and uh, and keep track of it, so. Okay, now we're gonna move down to seller profile. You can see that uh, app association, he is not associated to the KW app, which basically means he did not download the KW app. Now this is a fictitious uh, person and we entered them manually. So of course that's gonna be the case in this. However, if they had downloaded your consumer app and you would use the contact created by the consumer app download that would have shown up in your leads, in your contacts, then it would show that association here. It also shows that they're um, not assigned to a guide. We'll go over guides in a different video. Documents. So most likely you actually got them in here because you just found, figured that, oh, I, I have to put them in an opportunity so that I can start um, working in DocuSign. And yes, that is part of that. However, if you weren't working in DocuSign yet, if you weren't starting their paperwork on the transaction to get that listing agreement or whatever it might be, it is still a good idea to go ahead and create that opportunity and put it in Cultivate. This is future business. You want to keep track of what's in your pipeline moving forward. But this that we're talking about in this example is active business. Okay, so of course you're going to see some different things on the screen here. You see started transactions, submit to MC, you see listed, under contract, closed. These are the different phases of the contract closed process. And so listed is going to be things like your listing agreement, recads, net sheets, whatever disclosures you have to do for your state. And then of course under contract is going to be once they actually uh, receive a contract and you're starting to negotiate. And then closed is going to be your post-closing stuff, your settlement statements, your um, your whatever that may be in your state, Alta, uh, closing disclosures, whatever that may be for the state that you work in. To get started on the process, though, of writing paperwork, you have to have made sure that you already have DocuSign connected, and then you do start a transaction. 
Now I'm not gonna turn this into a DocuSign class. However, I will show you how it connects in here so that you're aware of, oh, and then of course it's asking me to verify my email address. That is not uncommon with DocuSign. And we will go in real quick and we will verify that. And I just went to my email and put the code in. And then we're done. Take a couple seconds for it to load. And then we have moved into DocuSign. Now this DocuSign room is now connected to this opportunity. You can log straight into DocuSign if you want to find it. However, you can also get to it by logging into command, going to the opportunity and hitting go to transaction and it will take you into this room. Now what's most important before filling anything else on DocuSign, and I'm not gonna go too deep on this because this is about opportunities, is to ensure that the information you wanted from uh, command got copied over into DocuSign because this details page is what all your forms being filled out is going to hinge on. So make sure to go in there and edit, fill in that information you need so that when you actually go into the document room, and you start to add documents that the uh, pre-associated mapped out parts of the form will copy those details in and it'll save you time. Okay, let's keep going down the list on here. We have offers and commissions. So commissions update, once you accept an offer, click manage commissions on the offer card to view, edit and submit your commission. So they've done a little bit of an update to commissions. Before um, commissions and offers, before actually let me back up a little bit. The commissions tab is essentially what replaced the green sheet, which is your contract to close sheet. It has your referrals, it has any splits on agents, all that kind of stuff on it. KW Cares contributions, office bill payments, those sorts of things. Um, they used to be attached to the opportunity. So let's say you got 90% of the way through a transaction, deal fell through, that uh, commission tab for this listing opportunity would essentially make this kind of a dead opportunity. Well, they did a cool feature update recently where they made every commission tab connect to an offer on the house rather than the actual opportunity. And what that means is if you do have to say that a deal fell through. We don't have to start all over with the opportunity. We just get to add it on here. So we'll just add an offer as an example. We'll say this was the initial offer and we're gonna create an offer. Um, this is, like, say this is the Jefferson offer um, and then we have an offer date and we have a close date. Uh, offer date, close date, that seems very unlikely. So let's say it's actually February 18th. That makes a lot more sense. We go to the parties involved. The buyer is, um, uh, his name is Tom Jefferson. And we can put his email, phone number, those sorts of details in there. Um, we can put the uh, address uh, for either, which in this example really is not necessarily necessary. And then we can use my uh, old AMCA as, um, the buyer's agent okay cool and we can put her email in here <clears throat> here we go all right and then we're gonna go over here into terms now in terms we're gonna put cash finance amount and sales price of course these sorts of things do make sense in a negotiation especially a multiple offer situation if you're getting a cash deal it's a lot less risky than getting a deal that's mostly financed or fully financed, depending on how they're able to work it out with their lender. So let's just say, what was a $350,000 house? Let's say that they're willing to do 25,000 in cash and we're gonna do the rest in uh, a loan. And then earnest money amount, uh, some, some states they do one and a half, three percent, whatever that may be. Let's just say that if we did put 3% in there, it's gonna give me that number. However, let's just say it's more like how we do in Birmingham, Alabama, which is pretty much flat fees. And so we could just say $3,000. It's going to figure out the percentage that makes that work. So you can do it on one side or the other. Option fee, that's available if you need it in your area. Uh, and termination options, uh, seller contributions, uh, add those things in as needed. Agent analysis, let's say the pros. Um, 
good amount of money down, which actually it's kind of not, it should be a little bit more than that. Uh, cons, um, oh, and then full list price. Uh, cons, uh, they are wanting repairs. Uh, summary, good offer, uh, might get a better one. Um, okay, it's safe. And then boom, now we've actually created the offer itself. Now, if you were in a multiple offer situation, you can add additional offers to this, and then you can hit generate offer URL. It will send, it will give you a landing page you can send your client to, you can email to your client to where they can look at those in a side-by-side -side comparison, which is a very powerful tool. Uh, for sake of brevity, we're not going to go into that whole thing with the multiple offers. However, I know many of you are going through multiple offer situations now that we have low inventory. So we're gonna hit accept. And then when we hit accept, it's gonna open this manage commission. So we've accepted that this is the offer that our client is taking. We've gotten the paperwork signed. We've done all that other bit. And this is the part for the market center itself. So we're gonna hit manage commission. And this is what the new green sheet is. This is where we're gonna put our contract to close stuff. This is where we're gonna add any referrals if necessary. Uh, general information, we'll edit that. Sales price, commission rate, total commission. Hey, that's a pretty good paycheck. Contract date, like we said, uh, let's see, it was February. Uh, oh, contract date, no, nope, not closing date. You see, you see, this is where we slip it up. All right, so the 18th, we're gonna hit save, cool. Uh, if we needed to add another agent for multiple splits, or say you're on a husband and wife, uh, two person husband and wife team, where one of you uh, is carrying the cap, and say you're logged in under the husband, but all the production needs to be booked under the wife, you can go in and you can do that in here, or a wife or spouse, or whoever that may be on that team. Um, you may also be on a team where, say, you've got a split, some goes to the Rainmaker, some goes to you. There's a lot of different ways to do this. This is where you'll do it, and I would consult with your MCA and Market Center leadership on how best to handle it to make sure that the reporting is turned in on the correct side on Winmore, and that uh, you get all the credit you can, and that uh, your cap isn't messed up or anything like that, okay? Uh, it's gonna give you a payment breakdown here. We're gonna edit this real quick, and we'll add a couple other things. Let's say I'm gonna give 100 bucks out of my check to KW Cares, which is a great 5013C corporation. Gives back to agents who are dealing with hard times. Um, we have KW Kids Can. Yeah, I like supporting um, uh, Quantum Leap for kids, which is a great uh, program. And uh, maybe even a bold scholarship. Sure, I'll put $5 towards bold scholarship. I took bold once and it, and it really impacted my life. Those are some ways that you can give back to KW if you'd like. Um, then we're gonna go down to extra, extra payment options. This is where you're gonna put in uh, bonuses, concessions, deductions, etc., etc. Deductions are where you would put like your um, transaction coordinator, which if you have a transaction coordinator, most likely they're going to be doing it themselves. But then you can also put in here things like, say you want to pay your office bill. So let's just say it was, uh, you know, your office bill and, uh, and you can skip and you could just say to uh, the office. Um, and then you can put your address in there for your market center. Sure, that works. And then um, uh, Okay, that's fine. Deduction save. And then we would save changes. So now when you submit this to your um, MCA, they will have all the information that they need to disperse the funds after closing correctly. This is a requirement for most market centers for their compliance. You turn in all the paperwork, you make sure that's approved, you turn in the commissions tab when everything is closed, they are able to disperse the funds, however it is that you would um, you have talked to them about. You can also add notes on this as well. These notes do not copy over though to the MCA in Winmore at the moment. So if there's something incredibly crucial that is life-altering, life world-shattering, I would probably communicate that to your MCA one-to-one -one, uh, or whoever it is that is in charge of cutting checks in your market center. It could be an AMCA. Um, make sure that they know. 
uh, because at this point they have to go in and visually verify this when they open the commissions tab and it can be missed. I, ha I was an MCA for three years. I missed it several times and it's something that we had to go back and fix and I just don't want to see you guys end up in that, in that, uh, that kind of situation. Okay, and then we would hit submit. I'm not going to hit submit because my, uh, my uh, previous AMCA who took over as MCA at KW Hoover uh, will be seeing my submission on there and I don't want to get her going what is Patrick up to today. Uh, you would submit and then once it's accepted you can see that it's been approved, accepted and everything by being in here. Let's go back to documents for just a second though because we are almost at the end of the um, timeline. All your documents are going to be, can, if you are using DocuSign, they will be connected to that document room. And so um, imagine that DocuSign is more like your office and your desk, and the opportunity is more like you're making a folder to hand to the office for compliance reasons. One of the reasons we moved to this system is because other document management systems, even DocuSign and DotLoop and some of the others, when we have access to the whole room, it can be rather confusing which piece of paperwork you're turning in. Maybe you worked five or 10 contracts on this. Maybe you had some things that just didn't work out. The most important thing is that your market center has for their state requirements, whatever they may be, and you guys follow your local rules and your broker's direction on this. Um, it can be a bit confusing on what needs to be looked at or not. So this really helps to streamline the process and make sure that you guys get paid faster, okay? So you can either manually upload them if you're using something uh, such as uh, dot loop and it's not it, acting correct with the sync, you can download it and upload it. Some use AuthentiSign, some use ZipForm, some use just different things, some like Adobe PDF for signatures. Whatever your signature platform may be, you can upload them manually here if you like. Next up on that though would be DocuSign. And when I actually click on DocuSign, you can see it says no documents to display. Let's go back in DocuSign and I'm just gonna add a random form. And so we're gonna hit DocuSign forms. We'll just go to a group. We'll go to a, a listing packet and we'll say a listing agreement. Now I'm not gonna actually work on getting this thing filled out or signed, but I'm showing you guys this for example. So we have a listing agreement now inside the DocuSign room. I'm gonna close this out find the listing agreement on here. So here we go. It's a required field for my market center. Listing agreement. I'm going to add file. I'm going to say DocuSign. And then you can see that that seller's agency listing agreement is available in there. Now the reason it's in there is because it's in the DocuSign room, which is connected to the opportunity. If you don't create the opportunity with the DocuSign room, they will not connect and there's no way to retroactively go back and do it. So you have to follow the process. But let's say that we had gotten it signed. So what DocuSign is going to do is it's going to have that same file name and it's going to have a dash signed and you'll be able to add that in there. We're going to sign. And then at that point, I can hit submit to Market Center and I'll just let her know that she's going to be getting this. Are you sure you want to submit this for review? Yes. So let's say I've filled out all the required pieces. I know the additional pieces that my broker required me to add that maybe weren't part of the normal checklist. Maybe there's a special situation, a dual agency or anything like that. A special addendum. I've added all the things. I've submitted and it shows status submitted. Once the AMCA, once the compliance person, the MCA, whoever it might be at that market center, takes a look at that and approves it, it will turn green and I'll have a check mark and it will say approved. Now, if it is not approved, it will be rejected and sent back and you will get notifications of that in your notification center here, as well as be able to see whatever notes it is that they have uh, finished. Okay, let's go back real quick. And let's look at the opportunities pipeline we have active. And so let's say we fully negotiated this contract, you know, where we're, we're, we're moved to under contract, it's an escrow, it goes to inspection period, it is an appraisal, financing has been secured, the, the seller, the buyer is all good, seller is all good, and now um, we've, we're moving forward, it's, it's clear to close. We are just literally waiting for this to close, and then it's done. 
we can move it over into closed and once it reaches close let's say the closing date and it's giving me an error because it's saying that my uh, estimated closing dates in the future and my closing date is today we can see why that would be an issue you put the correct one in there and sometimes things close quicker we know especially when you're dealing with financing it can be quicker or longer that's why they have extensions um, and then now it's moved into close it will remain in the close phase for 30 days and then it will drop off this don't worry it hasn't disappeared there's two places that you can still get to it one uh, of course is going back into the contact card itself and looking at the opportunities but the easiest honestly is all opportunities so we can go and we could filter this by um, we have to, of course I have to select Hoover and we could say closed you could apply and you can see there are closed transactions in here that were not part of my closed they will be in here forever and all time and you will be able to have access to them and that's pretty much it I know it's a lot to take in on the opportunities I was really trying to do a 30,000 foot view of it I did not get into all the different pieces of it and all the great things you can do but the point of opportunities is to keep the potential piece of business in one place so you can have a uh, 30,000 foot view of your pipeline not just your current business but your future business this is your whiteboard now this is the whiteboard that you put up all your business on the wall and you kept track of it from month to month except you can do this at a much larger scale and unlike the whiteboard it's not tied to a specific physical space when you have teams when you have admins when you have other people involved in this transaction you need a place that everybody can go and look at it together and this is able to bring that uh, bring that piece of it to your business it gives you great metrics it lets you keep track of what's coming near in the future and it helps you to find trouble spots that that may be happening or uh, things you may need to work on if you realize that your pipeline is completely dry in three months it's time to get out and hustle no matter how much business you have going on you have to lead generate every day if you want to have a consistent business and that goes not just for real estate but for any business that you will ever be in you have to continuously be filling the top part of your funnel to be able to have any cash at the bottom thank you so much for watching this video today i'm really excited to be able to bring this kind of content to you guys and i hope you got a lot of value out of it and until next time stay connected be joyful and go live your greatness.